Hi everyone, today I am going to show you two distinct sections of my uh, chosen uh, colors and uh, there are actually two palettes, one is uh, pretty basic and another one is used during monsoon. There are two palettes and uh, the white in the middle divides the two color palettes. The one in the left hand side is actually used during the monsoon and the right hand side is my basic uh, you know palette that I use most often so all of these colors are like uh, you know I've gained some experience uh, all uh, through all these years and um, you know selected on the basis of my needs and uh, the right hand side uh, is the basic palette that I have which is used uh, always almost always uh, in the studios and uh, the color palette that we have on the right hand side involves um, the colors that are slightly different from uh, other you know regularly used color palettes in the middle we have the titanium white uh, which is from daniel smith it doesn't contain any zinc white and you know on the next uh, right hand side we have the chrome yellow hue and which is a deep and uh, this is yellow ochre uh, yellow ochre is like found everywhere in India. The reason behind uh, there are selection of two warm colors is because uh, India is a warm country and doesn't involve, uh, except for certain situations, you know, warm colors are uh, more useful. And this is alizarin crimson, the the only red, but uh, I use red quite sparingly. And the next one is uh, burnt sienna. Uh, which is more often used as uh, my red not for making a violet but uh, as a basic color because the drawing most of most of the time is uh, done using a burnt sienna and uh, the cooler areas is generally uh, done using you know a cobalt blue cobalt blue i use because uh, you know this is the color that is easily manipulated and you can make a bright green and a violet very easily with a red and uh, with a yellow and this blue is the color of indian sky i that is something that i have found and if you want an ultramarine you can turn it into an ultramarine with some amount of red so this is like an all-purpose blue that i use now initially especially when i'm painting outside i struggle to make a quick dark for the accents that i wanted to have uh, because of uh, you know contrasting light that we have in India so I thought of using ivory black to do it more easily because ivory black if you mix it with another color it doesn't remain ivory black it becomes like a very dark color of that shade so you know and also you can uh, use it under certain situations so this is like a painting that I used black for the first time outside and uh, it worked very efficiently this is six o'clock light and you can see how contrasting it is even in at uh, 6 a.m and uh, the blacks that you see are you know are mixed colors mixed with uh, greens and uh, various other shades so since then uh, black has become an important part of my uh, color palette and Mm, I've used it in my studios frequently. It's like only one of the very constant colors. So this is my basic palette. So now we can uh, uh, get to mixing and uh, we can see how uh, colors can be used. So we are starting off with uh, chrome yellow deep and uh, it is a warm color, but it's the color that is uh, suited to Indian uh, situations. So I'm mixing white and it creates a very powerful, you know, warm white. And next is yellow ochre and yellow ochre is like uh, found everywhere in India. So this is like a slightly dull and you can see that uh, yellow ochre is uh, in my basic palette as well as in the uh, monsoon palette. So it's like a very common color. It's found just everywhere. So I used it uh, deliberately and added it to my palette. So now I'm uh, mixing a very beautiful orange and it's, it may not be as powerful as a, you know, 
uh, cadmium red or anything like that cadmium orange it's just an orange and it uh, works pretty well you can see that it's a beautiful orange and w with a warm yellow you can make uh, very good uh, quality oranges and bright reds so this is what it is and this is alizarin crimson so it's a regular cool blue a cool red i'm sorry and i'm using burnt sienna it's a transparent color in nature so you know the basic color the first color that i use for drawing and for tonal studies is this color because it's easier to wipe because uh, transparent colors uh, provide a graded uh, shade of the color and you can see if i add some white it becomes opaque and becomes a warm orange uh, burnt sienna is a dark orange now I have moved to cobalt blue, which is like an all-purpose blue that I have and it's a great sky color and since it has slightly less tinted shade, you can use it for the sky and I found that this is like a best um, you know, color for Indian skies and I'm now mixing a violet color with uh, this blue and it looks really nice, it's a good violet now I'll, for argument's sake, I'm going to mix uh, green with warm yellow, with cobalt blue and it will show that uh, it makes a very good green color and this green is present in India, I've used it all, you know, almost everywhere. So it works in the studio as well as in outside. Now the black that I have, I use it as the darkest form of blue. So I can do anything with it. I mostly use it in terms of uh, accenting, but sometimes I don't use a blue. I use this uh, ivory black as my dark color. It has some bluish tint to it uh, when you mix it with titanium white. And if you place it in front of an orange uh, being a complementary color, it uh, behaves like blue. Now I'm going to mix a violet with this and also a green. So let's see how does it work out. Mm, that's a nice green, that's a nice uh, leafy green, no doubt. I'm adding more yellow to it and it looks very nice, very beautiful. So we are going to do the same uh, by creating a violet. It won't be as bright as uh, mixing a blue and <clears throat> a red but it still works out well like a deep magenta kind um, like a deep uh, and uh, slightly dull violet i'm going to increase the chroma a little and we'll add the titanium white now this looks nice, uh, this is like a slightly dull violet, if you add a yellow to a blue and red mix then uh, it will turn into something like that. But here I am trying some uh, principles of zone palette, I am mixing ivory black with uh, yellow ochre. Now this produces a dull sort of a green uh, as expected and this is like a known fact and uh, zone palette is a great portrait color and this is the only sort of green that you can use maybe add a little bit of uh, white uh, to cool it down a little um, it's not it's better not to use too much yellow because it will move towards yellow okay and warmish color so anyway i mean uh, this palette is uh, quite capable of creating all sorts of shades that i need and uh, this yellow is one of the defining factors for making the job easier in painting India. And alizarin crimson and burnt sienna, cobalt blue and ivory black, all of them have been, uh, you know, chosen for uh, specific purposes. And if I use other colors, if I see the value in using other colors, for example, using an ultramarine, which is like very common color in my palette, uh, I use it quite often too. Now I'm here demonstrating the value of black because a lot of people don't like using black. In fact, some of them initially uh, told me not to use a black. But 
you know for accenting i believe uh, i thought it's better to use it and i'm going to mix it with slight amount of yellow to darken it down and that is my darker accent so that is like the shadow section and we'll be adding a little highlight to the tree so it works pretty easily and uh, very quickly now i'll move to my monsoon palette and this is something that i found out in uh, 2009 19 monsoon and when i was uh, painting it before going out i had a predetermined thought of using a different palette to maintain some interest in the painting process as well now uh, the reason behind i chose uh, this particular palette because the environment during monsoon becomes very cool and uh, there is a lack of light so i used ivory black as my uh, basic blue color i do carry a cobalt blue with me but uh, rarely use it during the monsoon so ivory black becomes like the dark blue and sap green the reason behind i use sap green because uh, due to heavy rain the greens become absolutely clean so there is some value in uh, using a sap green which is uh, absolutely nice and uh, the brown that i have is burnt umber it's not burnt sienna because there is lack of light in in some cases burnt umber is the shadow color and that is yellow ochre again commonly found and this yellow is lemon yellow and i use lemon yellow as my warm white rather than you know a yellow color so i'll be showing you some examples of the paintings that i did this is the first one that i did outside and with this combination and it was very successful and all the colors that you see uh, grays are made out of black and yellow color burnt umbers and sap greens and this is this was the next painting that i did on the very same day and this is some lighting contrast and the red that you see is alizarin and crimson i did it on purpose there was no person but there is some contrast in it and this was done on the next day uh, again with the same uh, you know color combination so it works pretty nice and this was uh, in 2020 again with the same palette so all of these produce a successful monsoon painting and the greens are the main um, you know thing in it you know if you want to make the sap green darker you can add a little bit of black and it becomes uh, very dark and then gradually you can increase the value saturation this is slightly warmer than expected but uh, this is becoming brighter so you can add, you know add uh, yellow to increase the saturation a little and brightness but uh, there are various combinations possible you can make them warmer and make them cooler in general the highlights are cooler so you need to use white and uh, yellow to make the highlights cooler on the trees now i am going to do something different and this is also possible in the you know uh, in the core shadow areas uh, this is like mixing a yellow ochre with a slight amount of uh, sap green and i am also adding uh, the lemon yellow to increase the brightness a little so there is cool green as well as bright green and there is dull green and everything is possible and this is my blue color during monsoon there is hardly any possibility of having a blue sky seen during the rainy days now i'm uh, moving to the burnt umber and the reason behind i'm i'm using burnt umber because there is lack of light and this color is uh, sufficient to produce any you know any sort of brown and let me give you a few examples again the same examples the color that you see is a, a burnt umber color uh, in the shadows and when i put it there against those yellow ochres um, directly transformed even in the foliage too there are some burnt umber colors so it's like a great color to use and this is yellow ochre this is like color that is present this is the color of uh, mud as well if you want it darker then you can add burnt umber and you can add a little white to make it lighter 
so this is the color of the sand if you have sand then you can paint with this and then the lemon yellow which is like a warm white and any kind of any combinations of green are possible with the you know this color mixing with green now i'm going to show you what are the other colors that i use and these are not the uh, part of uh, my regular palette but this is a uh, flake white uh, this is something that i use for glazing and sometimes for smaller paintings because this is slightly expensive so i don't use it quite often but it's recommended to use this as uh, a very important component in the oil painting because of the chemical structures that it has so you know this is mo slightly more transparent and if you want uh, to cover the area then you need to use great amount of uh, lead white but you can see the transparency in nature and i use it for glazing especially while uh, creating the distances between frontal objects and uh, you know objects in the back now quickly moving to cadmium lemon this is like one of the basic colors that i used earlier and um, you know it's cadmium and then cadmium orange you know and cadmium red all of these colors are cadmium and i believe there are there is no you know effective solution to or alternative to these colors and they are so powerful and their covering power is so you know strength is so high that you know it's irreplaceable to some degree until unless something new comes up now i am moving to uh, you know quinacridone magenta this is a very powerful modern organic uh, color and it has got a great tinting strength and one of the basis of a uh, modern printing industry not the quinacridone itself but the magenta color but as you can see um, you know i mixed it initially with uh, lead white and now mixing it with titanium white both produce quite a different and striking results and this is another magenta that i have i don't have the pigment number but it also creates a, a beautiful color here again mixed with lead white and this is uh, french ultramarine i use french ultramarine very often it's not a part of my regular you know color but color chart but again yeah, i use it quite often and this is almighty thelo blue you know very powerful color i use it sparingly not like all the time but now this is another blue color that i'm going to show this is prussian blue i use it quite often again not as common as uh, maybe cobalt blue in my palette but this is very powerful now you can quite clearly see how thalos and prussians are performing they are like color killers in an extreme situation and this is thalo green again a very powerful color and i'm using titanium white to you know tint it a little and this is like the blue green so you cannot really mix colors and this is very expensive cobalt teal again a very beautiful color and very popular these days so i've discussed all the colors that i uh, mostly use and um, you can see that uh, i also use some additional colors but from the ba basic colors that you saw i use various combinations of these colors to create my paintings okay, so if you like this video then please click the like button and also subscribe for future videos and also remember to click the bell icon so that you get notified when a new video has been uploaded and also check out my website www.costumandfineart and check out the description box for uh, more details about this video and take care